this this channel has has not been particularly or overly abusive towards you or me for for just plain bad film watching uh yeah yeah that that makes sense otherwise i'd have to be signed up for some type of uh like in-depth or uh, i'd have to be signed up for some type of trauma analysis so well this this it, it can kind of count as but that's all we better say yeah we we we, we aren't even aren't even really supposed to be it's the things that happen every year yeah what's happened in between uh the past uh, channel update. There was, there was some, there this was some new to. commercial development. Like, there's a new shopper thing that got uh, you, if I remember right. My hobbies, of course, are extremely important, but uh, only when you can afford it. Yeah, that makes sense. So, luckily, for a few months, I was able to afford uh, more of the albums. Yeah, there was that. Ah, uh, there was that old flea market in uh, in. The old old part of town down there. Mm-hmm. And that's been there for thirty-five years. Yeah. Well, I hadn't been in there in five to eight years. So yeah, it was time to go back. And you're walking along, and you find a, a booth full of. Uh, the second City Skylines video game is supposed to come out later this year, actually. I'm supposed to know what it is. Uh, so. For people, do you remember like Sim City? You, any of your friends played Sim City back in the day? Yeah. So it's basically the modern version of Sim City. Albums, for real, like a record store. Like it's actual good selection. Yeah, yeah good albums, not a bunch of dusty crap on the floor. That's the because that's the country and gospel. Yeah, in the in the golden oldies and the fit. Yeah, um, and. Y you insisted a couple of times that I went to that. Like, it took a, it took once or twice, you saying once or twice to be like, yeah, you really need to go to that freaking booth. And uh, the advice paid off. I, I bought some albums from that, that booth as well. You can't feed into all the gouging. There's, there's stuff over there I won't pay $35 or $40 for, but the majority of his stuff is only around 20 bucks. Or so. Yeah. Selection. So great. you can definitely go through and find awesome stuff. The if you don't just already own everything. <laughs> I didn't intensely collect for the past about decade where I could have. Mm. So there were there's there's still there's still great acquisitions I can get. Yeah, and I'm and he's got some. I yeah, I'm woefully remiss on even having my own album collection. Yeah, you you needed to so. actually start a collection, so yeah. that that was most of the reason why you. Had it was to. it was a good way to start. Everybody got their own copy of Crazy World of Arthur Brown. Yeah, there was more than one. And what I appreciate about his booth is just the right amount of copies doubles. Yeah. Remember how I used to not have a Devo album collection? To like, want one. Like three weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if anybody needs a, a nice, new traditionalist copy. Yeah. yeah it's, they're all in good shape. Yeah, you just wing on down there. There's like two more in there for anybody if, if, if you need. Yeah, plenty of Devo. I got a shout. Nice. Well, you saw it. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, I got a total Devo and a shout. Somebody, somebody was in the Devo album business. Yeah. That uh, they said they said that guy, the booth vendor, got a just a giant dadgum semi worth of worth of. Yes, it was a truckload. It was a bread truck, but yeah, a, yeah. a truck, a truck of albums. Yeah, a big industrial. And truck. Uh, I thought that was neat that so many of them could be. In order to take advantage of it to its uh, fullest, I'm going to need to build a new computer. So, it'll give me a reason to build a new computer. Devo related. Yeah. Yeah, you actually have the better part of their <laughs> of their uh, it, essential stuff now. Yeah. It's just crazy to think about. Remember, 
three weeks ago when I didn't have a single deal. Just how quickly you accrued. <laughs> oh yeah, buying buying those three Kraftwerk albums all at the same time. Oh was yeah. Like, there was there. I didn't even have any crap. I don't own any of those albums. To, to just pick those up at the store is, is insane. Yeah, it's crazy. Anyway, I love that place. Yeah. If I have fifteen dollars to waste, I'll go over there. Yes, sir. Because that was only a couple months ago. Yeah. Mortal Challenge. I was like, oh, I thought you were still talking about stuff coming out. No. Yes. Whatever happened with the effort of. <laughs> We were we were kind of trying to reseminate that great theme that uh, the yeah. credits. I was like, you even played till the credits. Did it? That wasn't in the beginning of the movie. That was just the end. That was the end. Yeah. And I was like, yes. Whatever happened to that? That was that was an awesome. Whenever, whenever I first heard it, I was like, you know, I should make that my ringtone. And then, that's a noble goal. I looked into the logistics of making something my ringtone. There's like two or three ways to do it. Well, it's nice there's still even a place to go. Yeah, because I've... It counts as in the wild. Yeah, it does. Uh, I've been... I mean, I've, I've ran into the dedicated album booths in my local town, but the selection is just isn't as good as that one. Like, oh, yeah, so, so I go to that one other flea market up here. That, uh, yeah, the, the people that run that uh, hopefully have replenished it. So, yeah. In addition to your one remaining record store up here. Yep. Or wait, did you say there was another? Uh, there is another, yes. Or, or a place that at least has some that are that are worth looking through? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that okay, place. Okay, yeah, you'll, you'll have to let me know where that is. That place is always worth going through. Coming up one of the times I'm up here. At, at least I say that going through it the one time that I actually went through it, so. Well, if it's something where you have to take advantage while they're still even in business. When I lived at this town, there were a couple other stores that, that popped up that I frequented just for a little bit, but then that were gone soon after that. Ah, the, yeah, the fly-by-night stuff? The okay. guy that wanted to go back to uh, being a computer programmer because it paid better. So then what else is in the... Uh, in the recent developments of, of the modern age. Yeah, for uh, for town stuff specifically, uh, most of last week, counts as three or four days, I had to uh, drive around on my spare tire because uh, the local work crew left nails in the employee parking lot. I put, I put another one through. It was the same tire that got hit the last time, so it's Oh, yeah, there was a uh, there was a previous incident. I got a twofer, I guess. Uh, I didn't have to replace another tire. It Ooh, wound yeah. up just turning, putting too many holes in the one that was already damaged. So, if there was a silver lining, I didn't have to spend $500 on freaking two new tires. The, the tires are expensive. But uh, yeah, cascading. There was some type of weird drainage issue with my uh, with the AC unit inside my apartment. I can never get away from these problems because remember, my last apartment, the AC unit burned up. I was without AC for I think two or three months, and like a month and a half to two, I was reduced down to a window unit. Thankfully, this new problem wasn't as big of a deal. Uh, it's just the uh, drainage line clogged up and uh, caused water to spill over into the uh, newly carpeted area. I was able to make sure and have it be written on the ticket that there uh, was that it was uh, not my. Oh, fault. not your fault. Yeah, I'm not spilling any dark stained things on the carpet. It's just water. If there's water damage, it's not mine, because I even reported it in a timely fashion. Uh, and perhaps the most important thing, mechanical thing that happened, um, a push pin break, where like the plastic casing off of a push pin just randomly falls off of the the nail of steel, the metal part that's the pin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Theory is, and pretty sure this is what happened, is I picked a, 
I picked a uh, push pin that was hammered on in the past, and uh, the the 27 by 40 posters are uh, known to be like freaking stone slabs and incredibly heavy, and uh, it just fell off the wall randomly <laughs> because the, the plastic casing broke. But it's oh, maybe they don't make them like they used to. All within a span of like two weeks. So, fortunately enough, none of it was like critical. And I, I should have used the donut, the, the spare tire thing as a reason to call off work. Because uh, I could always use more time off. Plenty of hardships in, uh, in the modern uh, American culture for me. Or not Oh, American. did I talk about that? I broke my TV. Wait, what? Remember remember how slim that, that entertainment center table is going this way? So, the the best and probably most authentic way to do it would be to try to, like, download somebody's YouTube video of the, of the ending song, the main yeah, song. Yeah, plug the audio in to your... Plug the audio in. Surely they let you select a... Yeah, uh, recorded soundbite. Yep, you can you can do it that way, uh, but that would involve having to uh, open up my TubeMate app, and uh, that thing works works great. But I would have to open it and search it. Yeah, it's not very wide this way. So I had it on its little on its little stand feet like this. Okay. <clears throat> Bumped the wrong spot. While I was up there fussing with this and that, and all that stuff that's set in front of it right there. Huh. Did it like scooch? No, oh, it ba -ba. Oh, it fell over. It's on the very back of that thin yeah. table that isn't very wide this way. Yeah. And it's got those two little stand feet. So. And I bumped the perfect place for it to. Oh my gosh. Fall down. So like, well, it's been too long. The last time I went without a TV was 2008, <coughs> for like six months. Oh, about half of the year 2008 or nine or so, I was without a TV, and that's uh, a long time since I tried that. So let's yeah, let's definitely push into not as long as possible without a dadgum TV. Yeah, not having to. Uh... Well, it's too easy to have in the habit. Yes. It's on all the time, basically, when I'm up. I can, yeah, I can, actually, that's uh, something that's, yeah. By default. I need, need to give it a shot. Since actually. there's no more TV, by default is having the, having the uh, thing on to, to search YouTube videos. Yeah. I mean. Whereas I'm, it should be turned off most of the time. Yeah, and turn it back on when there's something you really want to watch, like only, a movie. Yeah, only when you when you want to watch something, but not have it on for just all. Yeah, the time. to have it be on by default is screwed up. Yeah, so I'm kind of excited about that. Uh, as I as I get older, less electronics is actually a good thing. It's <clears> kind of weird for me to say that. Uh, to detox, I'm I'm yeah. addicted to this phone screen, looking at it all the time for one thing or another. Yeah. So to uh, balance everything back out. Well, also we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have trouble finding things to watch. Something you didn't hear? Or like what? Yeah, because uh, I heard the writers went on strike. So like writers and actors. Oh yes, what's so gonna it, happen for our? It may do you some good to not have for our thing. Yeah, is that is that well timed or is it still gonna be off by a few months? <laughs> uh, still have to release everything that was close enough to being done. Yeah, we'll still have. Even if they go on strike for a long time, we'll still have a good half a year's worth of new content to enjoy. Well, I hope Dune was done. Oh, me? Yeah, that would... Yeah, I should actually look into that, because I'm looking forward to Dune Part 2. Yep, I forgot all about that. There's another uh, There's another writers and, yep. uh, and uh, snag guild strike. Ba basically, it's the uh, same thing, but new technology... Uh, like in the 80s, they complained about how home media would impact their uh, the actors and writers' like income stream. Uh, you know, the residuals that they get paid and whatnot. And uh, now the same argument is going on again over streaming. So they need to evidently know how uh, the, this new streaming era is going to look for writers and actors.
UPS is on strike too. Well, they can use your likeness in a in a AI deep fake. Yeah, and that that's the stuff that I would be like very concerned about because you can... would want to become an actor just to give just to pay you a three hundred dollar fee. Yeah, and then, and then tell you, yeah, we can legally <laughs> use your likeness for a yeah for a AI reanimator. They can they till can, the end of time, and all you get is three hundred bucks. You agreed that we can load you into a program and make you do anything we want. Yeah, it's a and then a shipping. Or we're having we're having our shipping yes problems again. Um, I wasn't a direct sufferer of the UPS strike, but you want to be allowed to wear pants? Oncoming, uh, <laughs> but. Yeah, uh, evidently, the UPS people are on strike as well for, uh, they just want, they want to get paid better, which I can totally agree with. For the American political climate entry. Yeah. What do you even get for that? There's no more Rudy. What's, what's the most recent hilarity been? I... Just the indictment charges? Yeah. The 37 counts of, uh... The other way I could do it is rip it off of the DVD myself, assuming I can borrow that copy. Okay. Um, because it's not mine. It's his. Be region free. So I could rip it off. Just luckily that we're both in region one. Yeah. So I would think it would be pretty easy to make one just of any sound recording. Well, you got to open up the app and, and make it. Of, uh, what's it called? Obstruction? Yeah, what's, what's been the most recent hilarity? Just the indictments, I guess? Um, yeah. They I haven't can't. had any cool stunts. I can't. Yeah. We didn't get any, like, one of those giant, uh, falling <laughs> shuttles that's half completed and then no, breaks in uh, half. Yeah, there's no, no hilarity involving a political figure in front of a prominent building that I can think of. There hasn't been a lot. It's mostly just your idiot culture wars. <laughs> yes. And the uh, dumbest stuff humanly imaginable for your culture wars. We're going to cancel the culture. <laughs> We're going to cancel the wars. It's all canceled. Whatever's, whatever's enough to outrage 40-some percent of the... Of the Voting public. And, uh, I mean, last I heard, uh, we're tired of this. Nobody's really enthusiastic about, uh, any incumbent at all. Like, oh, in our running mates? Yeah. If Joe were to run again, like, people wouldn't be enthusiastic about that, but. The thing where they were eating spaghetti <laughs> gave me uh, a pretty good feeling. Yeah. I just, I just hope any debate and anything on the, the election trail is is as cordial and as yeah. just unifying as that. They they were they were really at their best when they did that. Yeah. I have to agree to that. Well, they can't exactly just stand up there and smoke a joint. No, it's not yeah. But whenever they, whenever, can, they can share a cigar. Whenever there was Whenever there was a sense of camaraderie and old guys sitting in a nice den, whatever, whatever rich old guys sit down in, I always think a den with with really fine looking woodwork. Yeah, and uh, the card table and whatever. A big cabinet case with whiskey and cigars in it, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Any anything that involves positive. Something that can bring both of these idiot factions together. Yeah, kind of like from the late. Basically, the late 2000s and early 2010s. Okay, then, Jacko's big league. Not only doesn't have that much output to even do, but he's, uh, he's my guy. So, uh, there's a lot of excitement on that. Ah, that Jacko. Yeah. The Jacko, the Jacko album. E EP. And that's the name of the it. The Jacko EP. Right? Oh, yeah, they're still gonna think we're talking about Michael Jackson. Yeah. The oi guy, Jacko. Uh, yeah. Energizer Man. From Bullet Down Under. That's the oh, problem. Is that the first thing you're talking about? Well, he is. Okay, so I just there's an easier way besides that. My, 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 main, my main gripe is I just keep postponing it and not doing it. The uh, sheer laziness. The, uh, and I guess the third way you can do it is hold your phone up to the speaker and record it. <laughs> but that's not going to sound good.
Oh, yes, you so, pick how bad it sounds. Yeah. It might be perfectly appropriate. And yeah, bowl it down under, yeah. Well, I finally got around to listening to that 17 minute long album. Well, good. So that, uh, of course, begs oh. a uh, music review. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anything we listen to, basically. But especially no. Oh, that... it's great usage. It's not just the novelty factor of, hey, Jacko made an album. I went through each one. They're funny. Yeah. You take a whole journey. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I think we went through it. It's an EP, but you take this whole crazy... Yeah. One of them he actually sings that uh, was reminiscent of Once Bitten, Twice Shy by Ian Hunter. <laughs> well, most of them he just kind of talks them out and raps out the lyrics and stuff. So, yeah. But in one of them he actually sings in a voice. And then there's like a Halloween... Well, I shouldn't, I shouldn't give up... I, sh I, shouldn't, I shouldn't spoil very much information. Yeah, yeah. If I'm doing a real review. If you're doing a review. that thing was awesome. Yeah. The eclecticism on that was... Was... Yep. Huge bang for your buck. Yeah, that's good. For a 17-minute EP. Yeah, if it takes you to multiple places in 17 minutes, I'm, I'm hype. And the excuse to do. Mm-hmm. I'll basically want to talk about every Jacko thing I see. <laughs> Short of just doing, doing commentary of seeing him in rugby games. Yeah. Did you watch that little bit of his best, his greatest rugby moments? Yep. Yeah. That was all quite funny. Yeah, it was. He'll be, he'll be like. Yeah, he's, he's a very spirited player. Like probably one of the most spirited people I've ever seen on a sports field. Like, yeah, know. he's he's so. Far and away, one of the top uh, sports characters. <laughs> Is it time to right or wrong? Here? Uh, well, in, a, in our pop culture news and pop culture scape, that I uh, apparently messed up the release date of Black Scorpion. Oh. On the Roughneck Review. Well, uh... Or uh, TV, TV Roughnecks. Well, I kind of can't believe it's that old. 95 and 98 are, like, pretty different. Yeah. So if, so if that so if that thing is from 1995, it like does it, it gives a slightly different feel. It just yeah. It, it just seems so much closer to what 1998. Yeah, actually, especially for them to wait six years until they made the uh, TV series version of it. I can I can I can understand that because like if I didn't pay attention to uh, the date at the end of the credits. I would have just assumed it was a late 90s movie instead of a mid 90s too. But yeah, because it feels like a late 90s movie through and through. So lots of over the top action. And Speaking of which, they had some uh, pop culture goods that really harken back. Oh, to me, of course it might count as more late 90s. When, when did the very first one of those come out? Is that 98? Diablo? Or am I getting that wrong too? Uh, I think the first Diablo came out in 94. Yeah, that's a long ass time ago. Yeah, but yeah, um, just in case people watching are gamers, they came out with a uh, Diablo, the fourth Diablo entry, mainline series, uh, earlier this year in fact, so. Kind of momentous. It actually is. Especially for no more than I give a shit. No, that's what I mean. <laughs> through, through my lack of involvement, I know at least enough to know they don't make a Diablo every time. Yeah, no. It's been... Some years. It's been 12 years since the last one? Whenever somebody either uses either the default pleasure to listen to ringtone that comes with their phone, or a nice, chilled, relaxed tune, it makes you not want to pick up the phone because you want to listen to the, the sound. So, anything I can do to expedite the process of answering a phone call is what I should do. However, I'm too lazy to do it. <laughs> no. Yeah, but the appeal to me would cancel out. To, to me, that's bad in a good way. So... Yeah. 2011? Yeah. The last one came out in 2011 or 2012. Nice. So... Yeah, you just assume, you, you hope for your... You, uh... Corresponding, uh, graphic upgrades and how, yeah. how it, neat everything looks on the screen. You, you got all those. It actually, uh... 
It requires a beef, a pretty beefy PC to run. I was oh, that's funny. Surprised I was able to run it so good. Uh, and my on my rickety piece of shit. It feels <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. This thing has a crank on it. <laughs> it's a 386. Yeah, uh, but. It feels, they did a good job of having it feel a lot like uh, my favorite entry, Diablo 2, which that game came out in 2001, 2000, late 2000, early 2001, so, they, they, oh, was that the brand new one that Gabriel had? Maybe. I thought that was number one, but maybe that was number two. So, okay. Yeah, Diablo 2 is my favorite, and, uh... They uh, they did a good job of replicating the feel and how the game works in that way. So uh, well, it's still classic. It's still the it's it's still the three quarters isometric view or whatever yeah. it is. Yep, it's still a Diablo game. And you play a barbarian and you go barbarian through like the uh, caverns with demon creatures. Yeah, it's still a uh, crawler of some kind. Dungeon cave. Uh, you go through the open, doing your uh, various action RPG stuff. Well, good. Uh, well, the other good thing is now I get to do the retrospective, like the entire series video that I want. Oh, to an do episode for the gamers. Yeah, you could do it. You could do a Diablo because through the years, when when whenever you plot it out on paper, those I'm gonna have what. 13, 14 years to do the video before the next the next one comes out. So, uh, yeah, it could just be an addendum. An addendum, we'd have to every further sequel. You could just you could just say update. So when I'm when I'm the ripe old age of forty seven, I'll be able to do the addendum. Yeah, when we put them out on DVD, you can just you can just add <laughs> and say update or or deluxe. I can, we can have it on the website and be like, fill out your order form for the Diablo 5 addendum. I learn about the uh, hardness, toughness, and uh, corrosion resistance pyramid through, through first-hand experience in the hard way of not having cutting boards with freaking cork pads. How do you not have, are you just supposed to make your own? Am I, am I just supposed to glue slash rivet Oh, this this thin little bit of cork onto a cutting board. So you have to not chip these. Well, apparently M390 is highly chippable. Remember my Leal? This this is this was the second time that yeah it, I remember that uh, there was a Gnadigus chip. Yeah, so, abruptly placed in an M390. Yeah, by me in my fault just for well just for coming down on a cutting board. Uh, okay, that is soft. You gotta learn all that. It's it's pretty complicated. Hardness and toughness are not the same thing. Right. That, and it turned out actually I was wrong. What uh, wear resistance? Wear resistance is closer to what hardness as opposed to toughness. I'd gotten that flip flop too. Yeah, I would say I would think it's the other way around. But I always confuse the technical terms because they also they also call it edge retention as different from hardness. Because to me, toughness and hardness sound like almost exactly the same thing. That's the so. problem. There's there's lots of weeds beca <laughs> because of. Yeah. But for edge retention, it's one of the best. Okay. And for how hard it is to resharpen. Yeah. But so. for toughness, it's not one of the best. Because they compromise each other. If, ah. if, if you want to make one where the hardness is through the roof, then your toughness suffers, and your stainlessness suffers, and, and is compromised. If you wanted to plot it on, like on a graph, it would cross. Kind of like fast, good, and cheap, and you can only pick two of those things. You can only pick two. Yeah, it's the same thing. Same. Hard, tough, and stainless. Okay. Pick two. Cause... And unless you're in some of the sensational premium things of. Of ah. what's come out just in the past few years, Magna Cut, namely. Okay. Magna Cut is what's supposed to be. It's supposed to fill not, all. Not compromise. Yeah, all, all three of them went up when they tried to make them go up instead of having one or two be compromised. Hmm. But apparently this is. 
Oh, okay. you saw it. Actually, you saw both of them. Oh, I, yeah. This was, this was the biggest divot. It was a. It was a. It was a. Yeah, I saw. I could see it from like six feet away. But yeah, it's it's great that. It so got, when you're doing it, make sure you have a. Like a cushion, ample cushion. Yeah, yeah. That's that's awesome because, uh, like, if I'm in the kitchen cutting food, and I grab one of those knives, do I have to worry about? Getting a nick on my rough surface, or from my rough surface uh, cutting board, or what? Accidentally eating a piece of. Hmm, <laughs> M390. I love a I love a good chunk of M390 with my uh, with my salad. Or what. I thought it was cool to go through an active learning process. Yeah, and it counts as a hobby. The best, the best way to learn is firsthand. So. Yeah, that's I'm a, I'm a hands-on learner, so. But yeah, I've cooked up uh, I've cooked up some spaghetti with it. I did the pasta salad and uh, not all the turn it. Does it have a Does it have a dial to close the spaces? Nope. It's just does it come with more than one lid. Surely there's a lid that, that can stay closed on. Well, um, yes. And uh, it counts as a it counts as a cool pastime. At least when you can uh, afford the too much money. Right. Yeah, it's like any other hobby or collecting. But uh, now I know. So yeah, yep. Uh, practical, yeah. Learning, learning. Now practice. I know that toughness is not the same as hardness. And yeah, and most of the time, if your hardness is way up there, it's gonna. Your toughness will not be. Yeah. The entire build is compromised. Yeah. Unless they start making them all, or until whatever the next space age thing. Yeah. Is is tungsten carbide going to be more common? Ooh, that would be fun. Or are they going to learn to do better, more 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 easy stuff make with it, uh, ceramic? Tungsten carbide would be fun to just have. I hope they find a way to make that a little bit more affordable. Tungsten carbide, I know, is not cheap stuff. Oh, well, like a Type One. A, a, a more a more advanced civilization, like a, like a spacefaring, yeah, advanced alien technology. Yeah, what do they have? Little mini lasers that just come out, kind of like on <laughs> Johnny Mnemonic. Yeah, the or little... uh, between those, maybe between invisible super lasers. Yeah, that you, that you can control in a maybe they... in an expanse only about as big as your hand. They uh, maybe... or what, what what replaces steel? What what's the next thing to where none of them are even made out of steel? Probably it would involve the ceramic or tungsten carbide. Then what? Yeah, uh, molecular. They would probably know how to, you know, like a like a string cutter, like super polymers. Yeah, where they would, where they would have. Oh, you're still talking about the invisible laser. Yeah. Something one molecule wide. Yeah, not a damn piece of wire, but something like yeah, a polymer, something. like an advanced space polymer. Something that's the essence of sharpness that can be controlled quite easily. Yeah, and quite safely. Yep. So I kind of figured, yeah, surely oh. a Type Two. I'm excited for something else, and I still have yet to actually go see it. Uh, a new Indiana Jones. Oh yeah, he has like a niece or a daughter. Yeah, where it's like it's Grandpa Jones. It's. And it, then the next generation is a lady that's his daughter? In the tradition of, like, that asshole Creed movie, where... Or his granddaughter? Yeah. yeah. It's an excuse for the old guy to, like, Top Gun or something. Bring it forth and pass it on. In the and, wonders of new Harrison Ford movies. It's... See, it wasn't even that bad in, in Han Solo's. No. What was oh. the terrible thing where he was really about to fall asleep the whole time? Ender's Game. Yes. That's pretty funny. But yeah, that movie came out actually a fair bit of time ago, I think. So, but yeah. Um, Part time! Anytime. I, I I have kind of like this. Yes, do you count as a fan of his? Yes, absolutely. Because of Blade Runner? Yeah. And because of uh, the first Star Wars? It's the first Star Wars, uh, Blade Runner. But the thing is. We don't forget Apocalypse Now. Nah, he was in that too, yeah. Um, that's the thing, it's like anytime I see even old Harrison Ford on the screen. Oh, elderly? I, s old, I still. Old, you mean early in his career or elderly? Elderly. Okay, like, so even when you see elderly. The late movies. Han Solo. Yeah. Um, 
the current movies, uh, I like it. I, and I can't explain it. Maybe it's like, it, it maybe like the Clint Eastwood the effect. The nostalgia, yeah, just thinking he's a cool guy. Yeah, um, but I, I, I would pay infinite amounts of money to see 85-year-old, you know, Harrison Ford, or however old he is now. Just to keep forcing the issue? Running, running through the freaking... The tunnels and having to dodge the arrows again. Oh, yes, that's a good question. What athleticism can he still do? I'm, I'm sure, surely they have him run from something in there. <sighs> Dude. Well, he's not an old, he's not a, he's not like a doddering piece of shit. Yeah, he's not, he's not decrepit. It's just cool seeing an old guy. It's an 80 or 81 year old. I don't know how old he is. Yeah, I think he's, he's got to be in his 80s now, but... Make him, make him, get, get him to do a little bit of athleticism for the adventure. Yeah. It doesn't even have to count as, like, I don't need to see him run for half an hour. Yeah, Just it's not cardio. Give him a, give Ride, him a, riding give, in a car chase or. Yeah. Give him a good tunnel running sequence like the old Indiana what was the, what was What was those, what was that one? A mine cart. <laughs> him yeah, mine put him, cart. put him, just have him be on something that's, that's zipping all around. <laughs> That is something I would pay big money to see. If you don't want to strain, then you just turn the lid. And you don't strain. So, uh, but yeah, I haven't been eating pasta all the time because I'm trying to watch my carbs. Even my doctor straight up said carbs are bad for you. So, oh, you can steam something. But yeah, just I like the fact that Harrison Ford is still getting work. And uh, the, the fact that we have to still... Yes, it's great for him. They've, he they've, has his whole mystique persona and wonderfulness of... They, uh... In the Bill Murray's and them. Yeah. Although... To where the industry just keeps coming to him. Yeah. Does he have to try to get any... Yeah, Don't you then, think he's one of those guys that gets sent like a dozen scripts a day? Oh, I'm sure if the uh, if the industry wasn't or when the writers aren't on strike, yeah, yeah, like I'm sure if the industry was was ready to let him go, he would be allowed to retire, type thing, like uh, they, whether or not he feels like he can't. They just, <laughs> but well, uh, yeah, but I I would say it's more of a them still coming to him, yeah. While he can still uh, get a few good things out. Absolutely. Because, yeah. Um, Ender's Game. Remember that also had Ben Kingsley? <laughs> it had Ben, yeah. yeah. Ben Kingsley. Ben Kingsley, yeah. Why do we still laugh about Ben Kingsley? <laughs> the Slipstream Man. Slipstream Man! <laughs> <laughs> he was in some kind of new epic thing. I forgot if it was Netflix yes. only. Where did I see his... He's, he's in some kind of zany sensational role where you can barely tell it's him until you're... Yeah. yeah kind of cool. Yeah. Part of... Uh, and who knows how old he is, remember? Yeah, he's... He was old in uh, Slipstream. Surely he's... Surely he's over 65. So, yeah. Yeah, he was getting on in Slipstream, so... We had a breakthrough on... The um, low carb, low sodium, low. Oh, what's the third one? Cholesterol. Low, yeah, cholesterol. Yeah. Good. Guacamole and broccoli wrap. That doesn't sound that bad. Yes. Huge freaking development. Yeah. Put some white mushrooms on there, or uh, or those bean, those uh, those sugar snap peas. Yeah, that does sound good. I haven't had sugar snap peas in a long time. A couple of carrot chunks or something. Yeah. The fresh vegetable of your choice that's been chopped up in a nifty way and then uh, for your for your spread and then you flip a coin if you even put the cheese in. That's true. For your flavor and moisture is uh, and filling is the uh, guacamole. Well, you don't need a separate sauce. You don't need a guacamole then a bunch of yeah because either a ranch or a sour cream that counts as the sauce like yeah so yeah you just start with it and then throw in you have flavor a large amount of broccoli and you have the and then you throw in the other uh, vegetables slash garnishes man of your freaking choice yeah I took to uh, 
that sounds those little those little that little that little blue plastic tub or that little blue styrofoam tub of those white mushrooms the mushrooms yeah those things that come pre-sliced yeah i'd probably uh, on a broccoli and a guacamole yeah. in a uh, low carb tortilla hell yeah yeah that i yeah that's the that is one commonality move i've the last time I bought tortillas, I bought the low carb versions. You cannot taste the difference. It Some tastes, of them are quite well done. It tastes exactly like a normal tortilla, only it's low carbs. Yeah, I'll shill for Mama Lupe zero carbs, <laughs> majorly. Yeah, so yeah, that's in, it's insane how good it was because I was not expecting the uh, low carb to be as good. So. Nope, we got fact checking to do on this too. Ah, uh, apparently it was 1997. Not instead of 96. Ah, okay. Well, okay. That counts as your other fact checking. That's There's got to be somebody somewhere waiting for me. Late at night, it's lonely, and I wonder how I'll.